All right, so uh, here's a car that I own that you didn't know I owned, and I haven't really I mentioned it on my podcast here or there, but other than that, uh, there hasn't been really much to say about it. This is a Range Rover Evoque, and the Range Rover Evoque is the baby Range Rover, and they even make a convertible, which is pretty heinous if you ask me. But this car is designed to attract millennials, the guys that wanna, and girls that wanna say they own a Range Rover, but they get it for $45,000. So Rob, if you're air quoting your car, that means you probably aren't too thrilled with it. Why did you buy it? Well, it's an excellent question. I'm glad you asked. So I bought this car because there was a customer of Gotham Dream Cars who over the years uh, always rented like two months out of each summer and he's whatever car he wants. Say, you want this car, we go out and buy it for him. Uh, this time he wanted something easy and simple and he wanted the Range Rover Evoque. We didn't have an Evoque, there was no other way to get it. It's a $45,000 car. I priced it at, I think it was $17,000 or $18,000. I think it was $17,000 for two months. And I know this guy, he parks it out in the Hamptons. He leaves it out there. He drives it like locally in the Hamptons every so often and puts 600 miles in two months on the car. So it's really a no brainer. So I acquired this car because um, the operating company at the time did not want to purchase the car. For whatever reason I'm like well I've got to I got to take care of this customer I bought the car came up with a revenue sharing agreement on that whole nother story but um, ultimately that's why I ended up purchasing the car so now the car itself is not I mean it, it's pretty small and, and I gotta forgive the fact that we we actually live so I got the kids seats in the back the thing that you you don't have a lot of is you don't have a lot of leg room but it's sort of pretty okay for cars in this class. It's got weird battery issues, I don't know why. And then this is the biggest problem I have with the car, is the depth. Now this is just a stroller, right? Because I have kids. And I have one kid, regular one size stroller, and you can't now, two car seats and a stroller, you can't like fit groceries or anything like that. So that's not really, a family car and and even without the stroller if you can only fit a stroller in the back there's not a lot of space back there and that's what I liked about the Stelvio is everything else dimensionally is pretty much the same except you have like an extra two feet in the back in the in the luggage area which is huge because now you can put a row of groceries and have your stroller and, and it's just much more usable um, it's similar to the Stelvio which I really like as I said in that See, it goes down by itself, doesn't go up by itself because of the low battery. It's similar to the Stelvio in that they both have turbocharged small motors. So they're very peppy, they get decent gas mileage. This doesn't have the eco capabilities and to me, as nice of an interior as the Stelvio. And um, it always, it's for, for the longest time, it always gives a coolant issue and it gives a uh, and it gives a battery issue. Now, I'm just too lazy to bring it to the dealership because it says, low coolant which it said for the last year but it says low coolant when the coolant temperature never goes above where it's supposed to be so why am i going to address that it's probably a sensor or something and then the battery being low is really annoying you know why because it doesn't turn on the interior lights when you get in it until you start the car because it's like oh we're in reserve battery mode and it never has a problem starting it's just trying to be annoying it's, it's like you know the the that little poke that you don't just like leave me alone that's that battery thing um other than that you know it's just not not too special in my opinion now why rob why now are you introducing this because you know why i gotta introduce you to the worst person in the world or the worst type of person like person air quote person it's well bird sucks but this car was in a hit and run right and my wife was over in Orangeburg, New York at uh, a baseball game, my, my uh, nephew's baseball game. And she came back to the car and it looks like this, right? This is like things flapping off. Like this is one, two, three things that I have, four things, if that's not one piece yet, it's separate. Four things that I have to repair. Now why, Rob, I, I don't get it, why? Hit and run people are the freaking worst. And there's a difference if like, I didn't know. This is not like a, hey, did I hit that thing? This is, 
Oh, I fucked something up. Let me get out of here before somebody sees me. That's bullshit. And every time something like this happens, what do I say? Oh, I should have had my dash cam in the car. I've got so many dash cams, but for some reason, I don't know why, I, and it's my fault for not doing it, I didn't have a dash cam in the car because the dash cams, they get the motion when things go down like this. And it's really, really annoying that I don't have it. And I've got a Vava dash cam like literally in my backpack sitting in my bag. And it's, it's just still in the box. I haven't even taken it out. That's, that's what's very frustrating, and frustrating about this because I'm almost taking blame for somebody else who is an asshole hitting my car and bouncing. And this is the worst person in the world because now like, look, even if I know how to fix this, it's gonna be 1200 bucks. I don't wanna spend $1,200. I don't want paint work on my car, but I don't have a choice because somebody backed into me now or pulled in forward. I don't know what they were doing, but this is not accidental contact. I mean, you, you jack the car up and then you take off. You are a terrible person. I will give the $1,000 reward if somebody finds out who did this and points them out to me. And when I say points them out to me, gets them so their insurance can cover, I will give you the amount of money this would have cost to fix just because that person doesn't deserve to get away with this. It drives me nuts if you, like I don't get the, the instinct. If you screw something up and, and like you're okay causing some, costing somebody else money as long as you don't get caught, that is so the wrong attitude to have. If you screw something up, you make it right. When my toolbox went flying out of the bed of uh, my pickup truck on the back of my truck in Kentucky, the insurance agent almost fell over when I paid the uh, repair bill. And A, it was the repair bill was too high, but I paid it anyway. And he's like, oh my God, like I didn't like, everybody says they'll pay it, they'll pay it, but they don't. And I'm like, well, why? I, I caused damage to somebody else's car. It wasn't my fault, I didn't want to do it, but it wasn't her fault. So I wanted to make sure we took care of that. That is, that is walking the walk right there. That is, I didn't want to spend $2,000 to fix that woman's $2,000 car, but I did it because you know why? That's what you have to do when you screw up somebody else's property. This really annoys me. This isn't like a little nick where you can take a little marker. This is actual body work. Car is gonna be down for four or five days. And some asshole out there is like, oh, go away with it. I'm telling you what, if you see your neighbor, if you know there, there was only some, this isn't the Yankee game. This isn't like, I don't know who shows up to the Yankee game. This is like a local Rockland County baseball game for like nine year olds and 10 year olds. Somebody knows who did this. Somebody saw it, somebody knows. I want you to get in touch with me, rob at superspeeders.com. You tell me who did this to my car so I can go send the cops over there to write them a ticket for leaving the scene of an accident and get them to pay for my shit and give them like the internet kick in the dick because everybody likes that justice, the internet justice, where it's like, these are your nuts, this is the internet, and it's uh, right into your internet nuts because you're an asshole. So that's why I have a Range Rover. Uh, why didn't I sell it yet if I don't like it? I've just been holding on to it, but that's a whole nother video. But anyway, Range Rover Evoke, if you're a millennial with no kids and and I don't know, just looking for a decent gas mileage in a semi-okay car. I mean, for it's, they hold their value really well. Let's give you some good things. The uh, Range Rover Evoque holds its value very well. I think it was a $43,000, $44,000 window sticker. It's probably worth thirty five dollars with 20,000 miles on it, thirty eight, dollars whatever it is. That's excellent, excellent depreciation in a market segment that tanks the hardest, which is the, uh, we call them micro SUVs. I don't know, I don't know how you want to call it, but... Uh, the, the small SUVs, that market segment sucks. Uh, the fact that this holds its value so well is because it's a Range Rover and the fact that you can buy a Range Rover for 38 grand for like a one year old or two year old Range Rover is a huge win. If you really like this car and you wanna buy it with some paint work done to it in the front, you let me know, same email address, rob at superspeeders.com. But other than that, uh, the fit and finish is decent. Now, when I say decent, it's, it's for, for an upscale SUV, it's nice. Um, the price point new is, is good. The depreciation is good. The ride is a little bit, uh, is a little, it's the power band and I'm not too thrilled with. It doesn't feel very, it does feel very torquey, but, and it definitely has no problem merging into traffic or anything like that. It handles speed well. It's just not my, not my cup of tea. It's not, not what I would sign up for, but I can't, really fault you younger you youngins 
for wanting your, your new SUV. Uh, it, it is a little bit of a cheater car in that it's like, yeah, I got my new Range Rover, when it's really like you could have got a new Ford Taurus. But there you have it. Uh, there's my Range Rover Evoque. Now you know I have it. Um, it just did, I didn't feel it was worthy of an introduction to this. Why? Why? So if you want to thank somebody for knowing that I have a Range Rover, thank that asshole who did that. Right there. See you tomorrow.